Oh, congratulations, first off, on the um, Walk of Fame, mm. Hollywood Walk of Fame. I watched yeah. the things. You had a lot of great people come out to support you, and, your, of course, your wife and everything. Yeah, so that congratulations. Was good. But I didn't care about it. I about the trick. <laughs> so we, we define the white folks as, so I guess, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants or... Is it like uh, oh, I don't give them that. I say white folks. White folks, okay. White folks. So if and I know all white folks ain't white. It, okay. Yeah. I tell white folks that if you can't get on the phone and call the stock market and determine if they're going up or going down, you ain't white. Hmm. Hmm. So I mean, is there such a thing as an Illuminati? Huh? Is there an Illuminati? If you know about it, it's not. That's bullshit. Okay. The real things that come, most black folk don't know about it. The Illuminati, black folk can't even read or write, know about the Illuminati. What, what's, what, what's, what's that? Huh? Mm -hmm. It's like the boule. Mm -hmm. Talk about black folk. Well, well, tell me tell me what business they own. Mm -hmm. What company they own. Y'all sit around talking about the boule, huh? What goes behind that? Hmm? Okay? This is stuff they put out, man. Mm -hmm. It's a game. Now, how, how deep does it run? I mean, you were talking about how... The, the starved rock, rock thing you talked about in the last clip, mm -hmm. that encounter that you had, um, you know, getting fame. Like a lot of people watching it dream of the kind of success that you had. They're the number chump stuff, man. Okay. They're number chump stuff. Who was the number one day at baseball planet? The history of baseball, 100 years. You don't know. All that. give a damn about that. The word fan means, it's a Latin word, fanatic. Huh? And while we're talking about it, Notre Dame's playing somebody today. Georgia's playing Alabama. Whoever wins, the white tune will tear up the town. But it's okay to ride behind a silly game. But when you shoot my dad or my son in the back of the head 40 times, that's off limits. Hmm? Okay? They do it all the time. Every time the game is won. I never understood why the winners ride. Hmm? Mm. Okay? So this is the game. Martin Luther King will be remembered as long as somebody's on the planet. Athletic stuff. I don't even mention their names. Right. No, but I'm, I'm talking about in terms of, like, I, I read your book, Nigger. Yeah. And I read Callous of, of the Soul. Yeah. And um, I, lo I love both books. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you've led a fascinating life. Um, but there seems to be a transformation. Like at the end of Nigger, you're still riding the fame. Like it's a success story in a way of that kind of reinforces the American dream. Like I came from humble beginnings and I became... Yeah, but that's you. I never said that. Okay. I never said that. Okay, so what? I've always been listed in the phone book. I never had a bodyguard. The filthiest people on this planet is athletes and entertainers, okay? You, with this show, have done more for the humanities than 99% of all the athletes and entertainers on the planet. But they've even tricked you to believe that you ain't nothing but doo-doo and they something big. They ain't nothing but a piece of shit, man. All of them, a handful of them, will break through. Like Ali. A handful of them will break through. Right. But what, what I'm getting at is that that you, you traded it all. You traded all the money and the su success and funneled it into the movement. That was me. This had nothing to do with no damn coach. Okay. Huh? I wasn't controlled by white folks. Okay. Huh? Black folks made me. Man, I'm in a little club making $5 a night, three nights a week. Huh? When I wasn't funny. See? I was the laugh at the party. I was the party clown. Most black folks can do that. What's the difference in being that and the comedian? Time and time. And. What you doing here now? Hey man, you can just walk in here and say people sitting there, wow man. No, you prepared for this. You knew what this was going to be about. You read the books. Huh? So you just don't jump in here and start doing it. Right. Well, that's the same thing. With athletes, when I see football on Sunday, I see slavery all over again. The Negroes in the field picking cotton with a ball and the white folks sitting on the bench with a clipboard trying to act intelligent. Are you crazy? Hmm? So that's what this is about. 
but it's weak in spirit, weak in heart. Ain't nothing going for you. So I got to reach for something. My family didn't do it. My children did it. So I got to reach in something, huh? And them children better not make no noise while that game's on. Hmm? Hmm? Dad said, be quiet. Hmm? That's what this is about. Don't nobody care about it. Hmm? But do, do people want money and success, that illusion, so much that they're, they're willing to sacrifice? I mean, like one of the things you said, I mean, you were in the belly of the beast at one point. You, you, were, you were playing everywhere, Jack Parr, Playboy Clubs. At one time, I was making more money than Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. White folks didn't make me. The agents I was with didn't know about me until I was big. It's the black folks that came. Five dollars a night. Didn't cost nothing to get in. Thirty-five cents a bottle of beer. You could sit through three shows. Why am I so powerful? I refuse to do the same show over the next show, so I could start flat-footed last night and done twelve hours. I almost got out of show business, Dick Sean. I went to see him downtown. I had to sit at the bar and handle money. So I wasn't under no drink minimum. So I got there and I talked to the black guy that walked through the men's room that brush your shirt off, wipe stuff off your shoes. So I came back the next night. He said, how'd you like the show? I said, I'm just sad, man. I decided last night I was going to get out of show business. I saw this genius. He said, Dick Sean? Yeah. Man, he'd been doing that same shit for the last 30 years. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know that white folks' time is too valuable to sit through three shows. Huh? So he'd been doing that same thing. He had a thing where you flip a cigarette. And when he get over there, cigarette falls on his lips. Now, I don't see the ones he missed. I said, wow, man, cried, not jealous, just, and when he told me that, man, I didn't know that. So I went back in the show business, nobody knew, Mm -hmm. nobody knew. But the fame, I mean, like, uh, like some people, they, they feel like you have, you almost have to sell your soul to get fame, or is it just hard work, or, you know, is it luck, is it consequence, is it? No. Most of us in Soul I Soul, we just call it something else. Hmm. See, I don't know about you, but I know when I was young and the girls would go to pee and we'd put more whiskey in and stuff. So the next day, I don't know what got into me, I did. Hmm? But it was black folks. I had to so much shit in my own. If I didn't bring a woman to the nightclub, I didn't leave with one. This is my job, not my hustle. If I was working at the steel mill, I can't bring no woman in there and play with her. That's what this is about, man. That was me. Me. I'm no damn entertainer. Hmm? When I looked at Michael Jackson, looked at James Brown, that footwork, no envy. No envy. I knew Michael better than his family. I put Malcolm on a 30, I mean Michael on a 30-day water fast. Hmm? 30 days. Nothing but water. Hmm? And all he talked about is to James Brown. Not out of envy, but out of respect. And then one day, after 39 years, he went on the other side and was the moonwalk. Hmm? The moonwalk. My three-year-old grandchildren can out moonwalk my call. Because once you break the lid off, then everybody jumps through. Hmm? That's, what, that's what that's about. All right. Hmm? And, and you kick that door open. Um, but, and well, let's, so... Just, just to go back, was was there a moment of breakthrough? Like I, I just, you know, I'm just trying to uh, see that, 
what that rise and then at what decision did you decide that enough it was enough for you i didn't no. i didn't i didn't know nothing about show business i didn't know that no black comic could work white nightclubs i didn't know that hmm? and so a hundred years ago there was richard Pryor's. there was no place they could work the black church if it wasn't for black churches we wouldn't have been able to act. We did the Christmas play, the Easter play. huh? We wrote stuff for the church. huh? And then Hugh Hefner, a little pipe-smoking dude, looked like Popeye. Hmm? When 98% of the clubs was owned by the mob, he brought me in. huh? Them black folks had listened to me when I wasn't funny, and I got so funny, they pushed me downtown where they couldn't afford to come see me. Right. Huh? I owe that. So I've always been listed in the phone book. Huh? Okay. I've never had a bodyguard. Huh? Right. This, is, this, is, this is my loyalty. If I didn't bring you in the club, I'm not bringing This is my job. Right. But did, did they, were you ever seduced by the fame and the lights and the money? or? Didn't have to be. Okay. Huh? See, I knew this. I knew I was going to hit big. I knew that when I was a little boy. I knew it for two reasons. One was embarrassing. My mother believed in fortune tellers. I thought it was ignorance. Never forget Mother Pooh. Said, Miss Lillian, you got a son named Richard. Say, next Tuesday, take him out of school, bring him here at 1 o'clock. I keep feeling something. I was so embarrassed, man. Seven years old. She said, your name Richard? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, how come you don't like me? I said, I think you're stupid. I think my mama's stupid. She said, well, I just want you to know uh, there's a star in the center of your head. And one day you're going to be one of the biggest people in the world. One day kings and queens and powerful will be calling you. Seven years old. Mm -hmm. And say money, you have more money than some countries. Mm -hmm. And I say, I see it happen. There's a brown briefcase. Well, you way back then, I'm born in 1932, man. I got no briefcase. Mm -hmm. Our luggage was shopping bags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get on train with shopping bags. Put your stuff in it. So a guy came to me from ABC, and they was doing it. Imagine you, the first network, you, ABC, did a thing called Walk In My Shoes. That was the first thing in the history about the black folk problem. So they came to the club and taped it, and whew, man, you know how happy I was. I didn't know the power. Hmm? They take three hours. I had two seconds, and the world went crazy. That's the power, crazy. So I bump into Alex Dreyer, who put it together, and said, oh, Dick, I'm gonna tell you, oh, let me tell you the letters, millions. Huh? Oh, and by the way, I, I, I got this gift for you. You got time to move, man, get it now, I got it, carry it home. It's a brown briefcase. Mm. Two weeks later, I'm on top of the world. Hmm? Top the world. I said to my wife, I said, you know, I feel something. But black folks, when they make money, they owe themselves a million dollars worth of treats just to store it, unmessing up their mind. That's what I did. That song, not for mama, not for daddy, but for me, oh Lord, huh? I was trying to get that stuff out of my head. Uh, my head. Give me some booty. You know, I started doing the research, booty is a pirate's word for the loot. Let me show you the loot. I'm going to get me some booty. Hmm? The black woman in America ain't never been freed. So it's booty. Nobody told us that. We don't know why we even said, hey, man, huh? 
It's a game. And sometimes you fall into something, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get there and you get caught doing things that you're not supposed to do. You got people that get fired from their job because they, they hit on the, the master's son. Hmm? The whole game. And, and, and somebody's keeping track of everything you have to do. They don't have to. No? No, they didn't have the stuff they got now. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to. Hmm? That's why you know if you believe ISIS ain't us, you're, you're a fool. You're crazy. If you believe them black pirates, Three years ago, huh? Mm -hmm. Somali, they don't have five yachts in the whole country, but they taking on the greatest navies in the history of the planet, and we go for that, why not? Mm -hmm. huh? Why not? Hmm? Mm -hmm. That's a game. It's like when I was a little boy, if you were colorblind, you couldn't go in the military. That's what black folk, it was a job, man. Medical insurance. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So one day, the Air Force, there was no Air Force, the Air Force. And they found out colorblind people couldn't see camouflage. <laughs> so right now, if, if, if you were colorblind, you can't read it right, never been to school, you go in as a captain making a thousand dollars more a month than a real captain. Because when you look over there, you see the shit. Hmm? Here. Now, the bull is colorblind. Huh? Mm -hmm. So what's the red towel about? Hmm? No, I never thought about it. Yeah, okay. So, red turns on men and blue turns on women. That's why the prostitute area around the world is called the red light district. Hmm? Red. That's why when this thug took a woman's lips that's cut like the vagina, except it go this way instead of this way, and painted red, and she wondered why you looking at her. Hmm? When the FBI Hoover brought in the horde, set Dylan up so they could kill him, she's called a woman in red. Hmm? So now let's go back to the bull. Bull don't see color. Who sees it? The man. That make his that make his joint hard so he stands there and get closer and closer and closer. That's what this is about. Hmm? That's what this is about. So when you start looking at and then go deeper, I was white folk didn't see me. I was invisible. Hmm? So I said, I'll make you see me. He didn't learn this at Harvard, Yale, Morehouse. So I put on the red shoes, the orange hat, the green light jacket, and white folk laughed at me. I said, I won this one. And all the laugh at me cracking, you got to see me. <laughs> you got to see me. You never saw me before. I didn't know why I did in this universe. White folks loved Bill Cosby so much. They had commercials, man, where little white children was riding his back eating tapioca out of his eardrums. Daddy Bill. Hmm? Hmm? And so, how do they kill my son and I can't get a commercial? For me, I feel that what Sydney was allowed to do in, in the heat of the night was the start of black exploitation.